An introduction to the Kashmir's method. Let's start with a quick introduction to linear algebra so we can see what problem we're trying to solve. Suppose we have a plane, and on that plane we have two lines. These lines make up our system of equations, and we say the solution to the system is the point where the lines intersect. Here, that point is 2, 1. This information can also be displayed in a matrix equation. Matrix equations take the form ax equals b. The A matrix is on the far left and contains the coefficients from the equations. The X matrix is in the middle and shows the variables. And the B vector is on the far right-hand side and has the values from the right-hand side of the equations. The solution to a matrix equation is a vector, specifically a vector where each value corresponds to a variable from the system. It gets a little more complicated when we add a line that doesn't pass through that intersection. We still have a system of equations, but now we don't have a solution to this system. We can, however, approximate a solution somewhere in the middle of these three lines. We have a few options for approximating this solution. A couple common ones are Gaussian elimination and QR factorization. And today I'm introducing you to a new one called Kashmir's method. The Kashmir's method is named after the Polish mathematician who discovered it, Stefan Kashmir's. It is used every day in the technology around us. It is used in computed tomography, often referred to as a CT, a common scan used by doctors to produce images of the inside of the body. And it's used in signal processing for electronics. The Kashmir's method is especially great for matrices that are scarce and overdetermined. A scarce matrix has a lot more zeros than other values, and an overdetermined matrix has a lot more rows than columns, meaning it is substantially taller than it is wide. So if your data looks like this, Kashmir's method would be a great choice. Now we're going to look at a linear system and apply the Kashmir's method to it. This matrix represents the outcomes of games played between four teams. The columns show information about each team, and the rows each correspond to one game. A positive one represents a win, a negative one represents a loss, and a zero just tells us that the team didn't play in that game. The numbers in the B vector give us the score differential of the two teams, and the X vector here shows us the ranking of the teams. This information can also be shown in a directed graph with nodes representing the teams and edges representing the games. Each node is labeled with the team's rating, and each edge is labeled with that game's score differential. Here, the arrows point to the losing teams. Let's look at row one. This shows us team A beat team B by two points. That means we have an edge between team A and team B, and that edge value is two. Likewise, row two shows us team A beat team C by four points, so we add an edge between team A and team C with value four. The rest of the graph is created with the other rows of the matrix equation. Now let's apply Kashmir's method to this system. Here is the Kashmir's equation. This gets applied to one row of the matrix equation at a time, and the small i's in the equation refer to the row number we're currently looking at. For this example, we're going to look at row one. Xk is our ranking vector, and since we can start with any vector there, we're going to start with the all zeros vector. This is also the vector that gets changed in each iteration. Let's go ahead and plug that into the equation. bi is the number in the b vector. In this case, it's two. ai transpose is the current row from our a matrix, and we transpose it to give us a column vector. In the denominator, we have the two norm of ai squared. This gives us the number of teams involved in the game, so here it's two. We're going to simplify this one step at a time, starting with the numerator. The two represents the desired difference between these two teams' rankings. And the inner product here gives us the current difference in the teams' rankings. This gives us zero, which makes sense because the teams are currently both ranked zero, so that difference is zero. Subtracting these two numbers, gives us the difference between what their difference should be and what it currently is. Here, that is two. That number gets divided by two because there are two teams. This simplifies to one, and multiplying one by the a vector does not change the vector. 
This vector contains the information we need to change our current x vector. When we add these two, we add 1 to the winning team, team A, and subtract 1 from the losing team, team B. Finally, we replace our current x vector with our new x vector. That completes one iteration. We can use this information to update the data in our graph as well. This is one version of the Kashmars algorithm called randomized Kashmars. It randomly selects a row, updates the ranking vector using the method we just illustrated, and repeats that process for any given amount of iterations. That is how the Kashmars method uses an iterative approach to solve systems of equations. Let's look at a graphical representation of Kashmars method in action. Here is a linear system where the solution is labeled x star. Kashmars method starts with any point, and it doesn't even have to be on the lines of the graph. We're going to start with the point labeled x0 in this random location. Each iteration of Kashmars method creates an orthogonal projection from our current point to one of the lines. That just means the path it travels creates a right angle with the line. The first iteration gives us x1. The next iteration starts at that point and projects onto a new line, giving us x2. This continues for any number of iterations, but it can be as high as hundreds or thousands of iterations. We're just showing 5 here, and you can already see how quickly it moves towards the solution. That completes our introduction to Kashmar's method. Thanks for watching!